today I'm going to present uh, one of my favorite work, actually, um, HeadFi, um, bringing intelligence to all headphones. Uh, this is a uh, collaboration work um, for me and um, um, Microsoft Rutgers University, uh, University of Science and Technology of China, uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst, and the uh, Alibaba Group US. Um, today, we all know that headphone market is soaring, but uh, what um, really surprised me here is actually this um, revenue reports for AirPods between 2020 and 2021. You see that's the revenue for um, AirPods um, itself alone beats many tech giants like um, Adobe, Uber, um, NVIDIA, and it's just right next to like uh, Tesla and Netflix. Uh, this is, uh, uh, to me, it's very like mind blowing. Um, but at the same time, we see that um, the headphones become smarter and smarter. Again, um, use the AirPods as an example. You see that um, they, becomes, they have seven um, different kinds of sensors in uh, 2020s. Um, but we notice that those headphones become um, smarter generally at a cost of higher hardware complexity. Um, people use many methods to make um, the headphones become smarter. The um, most straightforward way is to add in sensors, right? Like you add in um, PPG sensor, this is Fontonics optic sensors to measure the heart rates or you're using electrodes to measure the blood pressure, heart rates. And I also, see, I also see people measure like the EEG signals using electrodes. And of course, adding microphones for speech detection or speech recognition and um, like uh, capacitive sensor buttons to, um, um, to measure like the gesture recognition on headphones, like the Microsoft Surface headphones. And also, of course, use LiDAR to um, scan like uh, your uh, near geometries for user identification. Um, but we also no notice that um, there's another alternative solutions, which I call it sensorless solutions to do um, on headphone sensing, which use the headphone driver itself as a sensor. So here's one uh, really work from Mobicom uh, last year, 2020. Uh, it's from uh, UIUC Romeo's work. Um, uh, they try to use the transducer inside the headphones to recognize the teeth activity as uh, some kind of command inputs. Um, to make the human interface with the uh, headphone and eventually the mobile device. Um, but one uh, drawback for this thing is um, the headphone right now becomes a sensor. Uh, if you want to play any music out of this, the sensing will not work. Uh, I will explain why um, in the next. Um, but first, let's take a closer look at uh, how headphone actually works. Um, so headphone drivers here, uh, it basically, um, it's a transducer. It converts the input electric signals into, um, it excites these magnets inside the, um, for, for example, traditional dynamic drivers. There's a motor inside and it generates magnet fields and change magnet fields. And that will um, pull and push the voice call inside of a driver to move back and forth. And the voice call is actually connected with the diaphragm of the headphone and the diaphragm will move back and forth. That will push the air. And then we'll, you will generate the sounds, which is mechanic signal. And we also notice that this principle is also reciprocal. That means if there's any mechanic sounds um, like happen close to the diaphragm or on the diaphragm, which makes the diaphragm move and back forth, that will also make the voice call um, move and back forth inside of this magnet field. This is a permanent magnet. And then they will instead generate electric signal in the back forth, in the backwards. So that's, that is a sensing signal. So that's why we can use headphone for sensing as well. Um, it's just not optimized for sensing. And um, based on this idea at high level um, in our solution, we built, uh, we use actually a two port Devlin equivalent network to model how headphones could work as a sensor um, to do uh, like uh, uh, physiological sensing or other kind of gesture sensing. So, um, um, so here, um, the key part is the uh, eardrum impedance here. Um, so if there's any like change caused by in-ear blood pressure or temperature, this uh, impedance will change. We can measure that and we use that as a sensing signal. Um, but so what is the challenge? Why this is hard? If this is so nice, uh, like why not many people does that many years ago? 
So here's the challenge. Um, I use um, actual headphones to, make, uh, to record this signal. We use uh, AKG K240S. And you'll see that uh, in the picture in the left, this picture shows when I talk to this headphone, like very closely to the headphone driver, and it records my voice signal. And you see the level is like close to like a 0.2 or 0.4 millivolts. And when I tap the headphone, which is like a really large mechanic um, vibration signal, the level of this signal is like a two millivolts. Um, but on the other hand, if I play back a piece of music um, here, you will see that the signal level is actually pretty loud. It's like a close to 100 millivolts. And this is just like a moderate to low, uh, loudest level. So if you play music louder or play like a uh, death metal or heavy rock, it's even louder. So the key challenge here is that the input audio signal is several orders magnitude stronger than the backward sensing signal. That's why um, um, uh, the previously mentioned uh, jaw uh, uh, clinching detection work has this inherent drawback. So our task is to actually trying to solve this problem to make a headphone to be a full duplex headphone. So there are many ways to make it full duplex, but uh, uh, I will introduce um, our methods here first. Um, so um, at high level, I give an intuition here. Uh, we leverage uh, small circuits, uh, which invented maybe 120 years ago. It's called Waystone Bridge, uh, which is a mounting circuit, make a differential measurements out of uh, your sensor or resistors to, in order to make uh, measurements on like uh, small signals. So here, the idea is we will use the audio signal here to drive this wisdom bridge and make an AC wisdom bridge. What do we do first is to um, put two resistors, R1 and R2, to balance the upper bridge. And then next, we connect headphone drivers, uh, one headphone driver actually, to the lower bridge, uh, which is the CX um, uh, I uh, notified here. And the next step is we put another, um, um, I would say, trim pot to um, C1 which is mirror to CX that make the lower bridge also balanced. That's C1 equal to CX. After that, the bridge is balanced in AC. What does it mean? That means no matter what music signal input here, um, your bridge will still be, uh, in center tap of the bridge, it will still be measured zero. So the input signal basically canceled by this bridge. But um, on the other hand, the backward sensing signal um, still, if you look at the circuiting, uh, your kernel circuits um, method, you, you, you will still see this sensing signal in the background. So the VG here will be non-zero if there's a sensing signal. So that's the high level intuition that we can use wisdom bridge to make the headphone to be a full duplex headphone. Um, okay, so this looks good. Is the problem solved? Um, of course, unfortunately no. Um, so um, if we look back, on uh, the trim pot circuit, that the adjusting C1 is actually not trivial. Uh, why? I, I will give an um, ex explanation here. The headphone is an AC device. Actually, if you want to balance that component, you have to balance the components in the, across the entire audible range, which is 20 hertz to 20, kilo, 20 kilohertz. Um, this is equivalent to create a mirror RLC circuit to match the headphone driver. Um, here I use example of um, dynamic driver. So um, dynamic driver in, this, uh, in the literature can be equivalent as on the air parts, um, inductor, R part, resistor, and capacitor part. Although it's a big inductor, um, it's a coil, but still it has um, different components. Like electrostatic headphones also have this problem, but maybe planar headphone is easier, but uh, the majority of the headphone in the market is actually a dynamic headphone. Um, moreover, what makes this even worse is that headphone drivers um, varies uh, from model to model. Um, AirPods Pro, um, Sony headphones, Samsung Buds, they all have different electric and mechanic characteristics. So if you want to do this, you have to do this for each headphone, which is, uh, not an uh, easy task, but I would say it's possibly still doable. Um, so I'll introduce what is the trick for us, HeadFi. Um, the key idea uh, in HeadFi design is actually the headphone drivers comes in a pair. So what does that indicate? So that means 
um, uh, first, why the headphone driver comes in up here is when those manufacturers make the headphone drivers, they really want you to feel the balanced sound imaging that you will not hear the left, left side is louder than the right side. So that's why uh, manufacturers like tries desperately to make the headphone drivers to be balanced in terms of both electrical and mechanic properties. So um, that, that is really nice for our um, wisdom bridge design. Um, we actually, we call it this wisdom bridge, but it's, right now it's not a wisdom bridge. We um, simply replace the trim port C1 with the other pair of headphone driver to balance this bridge by natural. So we don't need to do like any fancy ADSA, DSA, trying to measurements those R and C, and this just balanced by nature. And based on this idea, we um, build an end-to-end -end system. Uh, we use another open amp to amplify the center tap signal and um, connect this part of circuits to your mobile device or um, computer. So right now, um, the full skeleton of the HeadFi um, um, platform is um, almost ready. So here I use word platform. That's exactly what we um, did here. So the HeadFi itself is not an application. It's a platform that enables traditional headphones or say I describe as dummy headphones to be a smarter ones. Um, so um, this is what I said. I will use example to demonstrate that. Um, the, like I said, um, many applications could be enabled based on this um, idea. The first application I want to say uh, describe is the user identification. Uh, now we notice that headphone is full duplex. What does it mean? It means it can both transmit and receive sounds at the same time. And uh, we know that uh, maybe you and me, um, our ear canal geometry is uh, different. So we let the headphone actively send a chirp sound and collect the echo signal to provide the ear canal geometry. And we use that as feature to um, identify who you are. So the key inside here is each person's ear canal has distinct biostructure. So I, here I use an um, uh, example. Um, this is a low cost earbuds um, to, 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 um, to validate this. You see here this um, three box low-cost earbuds for three different users. And in the frequent response, they have quite um, a different uh, response uh, in terms of all these three users. And uh, the same um, observation also um, applied here for like a more expensive um, biodynamic headphones. You will see that uh, these three response are quite different. And we actually use this channel response as a feature and use an extremely simple network, not network, it's actually, actually, actually a SVM to do this classification. And we conduct experiments, like we invited actually identical twins to see uh, if we can um, differentiate who they are. And surprisingly, we found they still have like close to 95 percentage of accuracy, even for uh, like identical twins. And so we also uh, tested this like on the different um, like, uh, uh, user movements scenarios and it all has like um, more than um, 90 percentage of accuracy and um, the next uh, application under the same platform is uh, like a uh, tariffs monitoring actually we also did like a uh, brace monitoring and here on um, the idea is we leverage this uh, weak excitation signals induced by the subtle blood vessel deformation in the ear canal to measure the heart pumping. So what does it mean here? I use uh, the actual signal a measure from the headphone as example here. This is a raw signal measured by head five. Um, you see um, like, uh, you see some pattern here, but uh, mostly just noise. But if we apply a simple low pass filter here, you'll see that very clean, um, um, actually mechanical heart rate signal here. Uh, this is my pattern. And if you apply an auto correlation function onto this, then you got the heart rate intervals. And here we also did some tricks to um, detect the body movement to make it a little bit more robust. Um, but under this principle, we can also measure the heart rate using headphone. I, I would, I will, I will show a demo later about this as well. Um, and the third application we demoed in the paper is actually you can make the headphone to be a just uh, uh, like a gesture touching sensing headphone, like you know, like a AirPods or Microsoft Surface. You can touch the headphone and uh, do like volume up, volume down, things like that. So here we can do the same thing. The intuition is, for example, notice that the measurement all of our wisdom bridge is actually a differential measurement between the left driver and the right driver. That means you got a signal difference between the left driver and the right driver. So here, if you touch the left driver, you get the first peak 
um, to the negative side. And if you test the right driver, the, actually the first pick is reversed. The face is uh, inverted. And if you do another um, 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 gesture like sliding rather than tapping, you will see the signal also um, changes drastically. It's, it has like longer durations um, of different patterns. And again, we can train some uh, network um, and so we actually train a multi-class SVM here to also um, identify this touch gesture in our um, work in our paper. Um, the last uh, but not least uh, application we demonstrated in the paper is actually the voice call. Uh, this is probably the most straightforward application out of HeadFi, but I would say this is probably the most useful application if the HeadFi really deploy in the wild. So right now we can make the headphone, make a phone call without actually adding the microphone inside the headphone. This is nice. Um, uh, so here I will uh, show some uh, example uh, recordings make by different headphones. The first one, the AKG K812 is an open back headphone. So right now here is a uh, recording. I I'll try to play it. Okay, strong and also gives us shape. Okay, thanks. And the next one, the, uh, the Grido GS3000 is an on-ear headphone. Okay, strong and also gives us shape. Yeah, you, you hear the texture, the sound is a little bit different because they are different kind of headphones and they use different transducers, different housings. And the worst case is uh, the one I show here uh, is a uh, Jay's on ear headphone. Why this is the worst case? Because this is uh, uh, like a large close back headphone. It has mechanic um, isolations for the sounds. So it's uh, kind of bad, bad. I'll play this here. Also strong and also good with that Yes. Uh, the sound here is um, pretty muffled, but you can still hear the sound because of the bone conduction and tissues. So we believe if you put some high quality amplifier to make the signal to noise ratio to be really good, then you can still use it. Um, so next one, I will use an actual um, demo studio, um, demo video um, to show how this works. So here, um, uh, uh, please, maybe you want to lower the volume a bit. This, is, this can be really loud. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so here, the dongle is actually headphone dongle. Um, and I uh, use a very low cost headphone to plug into this dongle. Um, let me play this. Um, so you can plug your headphone into the dongle and you plug the dongle into your mobile device. Uh, right now uh, it's, not, it's my desktop computer and the headphone uh, now boosts the intelligence of the dummy headphone. So right now um, I choose uh, actually a filtered envelope um, of the signal out of the headphone circuits. You see the waveform in real time. And when I pick up the headphone, uh, you see this is, there's a large mechanic um, signal here. And if you look uh, closely to here, you see that my heart rate pattern show up here as well. So this is my heart rate pattern. And we use this pattern, like I said, to measure my heart rate. This shows when I listen to the music and I'm measuring my heart rate to use um, the same headphone. Uh, this is a ground truth um, post estimator that measure my heart rate. My heart rate here is a little bit fast. It's like uh, 86, 87 BPM per um, BPM, um, like 86. And at the same time, my heart rate, um, all of um, the health system says is like 86 BPM. And at the same time, I can collect my um, ECG, oh no, it's my mechanics heart rate signal. And use the same platform, I can do user identification. So right now the headphone is on the table, it says wrong user. And if I put the headphone on the dummy heads, and it still says wrong user. And uh, uh, then I put my headphone on my head. Okay, it's uh, recognized. Yeah, this is me. And uh, this is just a teaser video. This is my um, beloved dog, daughter, that I measure um, her heart rates. Uh, he's, uh, she's a little bit excited, but uh, she's uh, well treated after this experiment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, so the natural question raised by HeadFi is the performance um, of this application will be um, various drastically depends on the type of headphones and uh, the mechanic structure of the headphones. So that's why we conduct experiments out of uh, more than 50 pairs of headphones with uh, more than 50 like uh, human subjects in our experiments. Um, I, can, uh, I don't, because of time, I cannot go through the um, experiment results like one by one, but I can show some insights here um, from my uh, experiments. We found that 
um, actually for like user identification. So the performance first will differ, differ, differentiate from application to application. Like user, application, user identification, the in-ear headphone actually works the best. Um, this is um, very straightforward because the in-ear headphone like get closer to your ear canal. Um, um, but the on-ear headphone and over-the-ear headphone, they all works just, um, um, they were sacrificed a little bit of accuracy. But again, we didn't use like sophisticated network. We just use a simple SVM to make the work. But for heart rate monitoring, um, the on-head on headphone and over-the-head headphone actually works better than in-ear headphone. And some of the in-ear headphone actually just doesn't work at all, and uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and there are some other insights. If you are interested, you can look into our paper. So as a summary, um, a conclusion, the Headify, uh, the, the significance of Headify is, uh, again, it's a platform. Headify turns the dumb headphone or the traditional headphone into smart ones without adding sensors, like even microphones on headphones. And um, the user can still enjoy the music while using Headify. And it is no cost and uh, low power at the same time. And uh, the higher significance of this um, work is that Headify enables ubiquitous human to headphone um, interactions. Um, that's my vision for this work. And um, uh, thank you for uh, attending my uh, presentation. And uh, Headify actually uh, launches a startup company based on this technology. It's called Omic. Uh, it's based in Mountain Rail. Uh, no, it's Montreal, Canada. And uh, we are hiring as well. And uh, welcome to apply. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Is there any questions?